what's up guys? We're back in again with a new Pekka deck that feels like cheating inside a Clash Royale. This new meta strategy has played top 1000 in the world and it gives a ton of good matchups. Imagine playing Hog Rider, Royal Giant, Ram Rider, or Electro Giant, or any big beatdown push that has to break through a Pekka, Tornado with Executioner, and Tombstone. And if you somehow get a bad card cycle, you can even use your Goblin Drill. All of the wing conditions that have to work their way through towards the tower automatically lose to this deck. And if you play against Miner, Goblin Drill, or Graveyard, you have archers and goblins to catch their miners and crush their graveyard skeletons quick. The only tough matchup is an expo or mortar that's shooting from your opponent's side of the map. Everything else in the game is easy. Because while your opponents can never break through, you'll be breaking down their towers with Goldenite Tornado. If you don't have Goldenite, use Dark Prince instead. Let's whirlwind our way into some games and assert dominance. Lots of love to everyone that's supporting the channel with Critter Code Sir Tag. Yo, the CR Dream Team. Let's see it, man. I'm ready to see what you're going to be bringing for us today. So I'm going to go cook with my goblins in the left-hand side, and we're going to leave you wide open with the Royal Ghost to see if you want to go and drop some extra elixir. If not, we can conveniently tornado and activate King Tower with that ghost and take no damage. It's a difficult timing to do if you're not necessarily familiar with it, but you will not take a hit from the Royal Ghost if you drop your tornado at the perfect timing, which is exactly what we were able to accomplish there. So is this going to be an Electro Giant deck? I really want this to be Electro Giant, but there's a chance it's going to be three Musketeers. I don't know what I'm playing against right now. I do know that I've got a P.E.K.K.A., a Tornado, and a Tombstone, so no matter what bridge spam you got, it's going to get shut down. So, wait, 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 wait. We can cook with a P.E.K.K.A. at the river. You guys know the deal. She's got two swords, so she's going to be chopping through units like butter. Oh my goodness. This is awesome. We can go in for archers here as well, and then go in for the Goldenite. Oh, wait. Is the P.E.K.K.A. going to munch on the Elixir Collector? This is a fairy tale. I need it to happen. I need it. Dude, you robbed me right now. How will I ever live that down? I had the opportunity. I had the moment. And the P.E.K.K.A. died before she was able to scramble her way to success. Genuinely, I think P.E.K.K.A. deserves a little bit of an HP buff. Maybe, because I'm biased and I want the P.E.K.K.A. to get the hit there. But in reality, I think she does deserve some more health. You guys can let me know down below in the comment section. What do you guys think? You think fair, P.E.K.K.A. is fair and balanced? Would you like to see a small buff to her? I think the other cards in the deck are just really, really strong. Uh, so I wouldn't buff any of them. But I think P.E.K.K.A., if there was one card to buff, it would be her. So, are we going to get some nice damage here? On top of the Royal Ghost that is dead. We can go in for the Golden Knight and the One Musketeer side, and we can P.E.K.K.A. in the lane of the two to one-shot them. So this is very nice. And then we can go in for our Golden Knight in the middle. Oh, no, this is scary. Wait, 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 wait. That was so good. I got so lucky. <laughs> you went first for Fisherman Prediction way too early. I was so excited that I couldn't even spit out the words correctly. I was, like, fumbling so hard because the Fisherman fumbled and gave me so much value. That was awesome. That made me happy. The P.E.K.K.A. Part 2, but then you just don't do it again. Unfortunate. That one was way more far off than the first one. I think it's better for me to go in for a P.E.K.K.A. on the same side as the Royal Ghost and also his severe battle spam here. He's just dropping everything he's got. He's not going to go and drop the Golden Knight Dash, though, right? It's not a play. Wait. What if I just tornado your three Musketeers into the Golden Knight and use my Executioner and instantly delete them? Is there is there a play that that works? The Executioner is going to get pulled. If only, if only that worked out a little bit better for us. I'm still going to drop the dash because I'm pretty sure it dashes onto the tower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't you guys love how the Golden Knight dashed back towards the river and then still dashed towards the tower? It was just wanting to go everywhere. It wanted to experience every flavor of ice cream that this man had available for us. So we're going to go for another pack at the river. We can go in for our Executioner. We can go in for our Golden Knight. And you, know, you guys know the deal by now. We just go in for our Golden Knight, and we dash, and we crash. And we have a big birthday dash on the tower. <laughs> We're bashing everything. The Archer should lock on to the tower and win us the game. If not, we can eat the Musketeer, go in for a Goblin Drill, go for Archers again at the river, and just keep up the onslaught of aggression. It's so meme and dreamy to do this, but when you have a Goblin Drill deck with Tornado and Golden Knight, your opponent never has a chance to ever let up. Like, you are just constantly spamming them at all points in time. So I can go in for a Tombstone here, go for another Goblin Drill. Wait, what if I tornado all the Musketeers to one side and then ignore them and say, I don't care, and then go in for a Goblin Drill here and then just go in for like a Archers and then win the game because I think that the Goblin Drill Goblin will just do too much damage. So we walk with a win, GG, and well played. It's pretty fun to have that happen and just know that even if three Musketeers or like 10 Elixir is spamming you on both sides, you got the game locked up because there's no way for them to finish off your goblins. Especially when you look at your opponent's deck, notice that they don't have a single small spell to remove your sneaky goblin. 
That win pushes us to 4,800 in the world. Yo, what's up, Fisher? I'm ready to go and catch some juicy Goldenite connections on you. So I want to go for a Tombstone at the start, give our opponent the perception that we've got, like, you know, maybe a Lava Hound deck and he's going to play really aggressive. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. He went for a Hawk Rider when he had no business doing it at the start. That's awesome. Hog Rider Earthquake right into the Tornado and Tombstone. And he's like, oh, it's already a good game. But it's going to get even better for us, bro. We've got a P.E.K.K.A. as well. And we've got Goblin Drills. So we have four answers to your Hog Rider. How's that going to make you feel, bro? You're already intimidated by our deck. And it's going to get even more spicy. So we're going to go in for a P.E.K.K.A. here. Because that's one of our best ways of countering the Giant Skeleton. Giant Skeleton has got very high health. We want to kill that as quickly as we can. So that's what I'm going to work with. What do we do? Do we go for a Golden Knight here on top of the Ice Spirit so it doesn't take any damage on our tower? He's going to pre-log as well. He doesn't really hit anything. He won't end up having any good answer to this if I go in for Goblins off to the side and they bypass and they go towards the tower, please. Yo, that Golden Knight dash was insane. Notice how his Bomb Tower was targeting the P.E.K.K.A. because the P.E.K.K.A. arrived across the river first. And the Goblin stayed locked and loaded on the tower, knowing what it wanted in life. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I respect out here. So... I want to go in for a Executioner in the middle, and then I just want to go and Tornado the Hog Rider again. I think that this is going to be pretty good for us, as long as the Executioner is able to finish off the Giant Skeleton. I did slightly mess up the Tornado timing against the Hog Rider, simply because I was a little bit scared of the Giant Skeleton. I was like, oh man, should I do this? And because I was apprehensive and I didn't pull the trigger immediately on the Tornado, I took one Hog Rider hit. It's all good. You live and you learn, and you always become more decisive from your mistakes. So I'm going to go in for Archers here to finish off the Ice Spirit. The Goblin Drill is going to get fully countered by the Bomb Tower. I need to start switching up my Bomb Tower placements and drop it in the back because all the cards that he has, like Bomb Tower and Giant Skeleton, are going to be best countering the Goblin Drill if it's dropped in front. So he'll probably make those predictions 9 times out of 10 in front of his tower. So I'll start switching it up and swerving it and going in the back. Sometimes I'll still stay in the front if I've got a Golden Knight counter pushing so I have more potential of tornadoing units closer to the Golden Knight so I can leapfrog on. But I'm not going to do that all the time. Yo, this Executioner is going to be so good. I'm excited because it's able to splash through, hit the Giant Skeleton, and then still end up sniping the Archer Queen. So that's great. Finishing off the Queen is awesome. <laughs> Dude, he's not ready right now. I'm telling you guys. We're going to go Goblins here, the other side. We're going to follow up with a Golden Eye Dash and make sure that we're going to force out even more Elixir because I'm pretty sure the Golden Eye Dash is on tower there. Yeah, you just dropped your Bomb Tower slightly too close, and I'm going to take that opportunity nine times out of ten. If you guys didn't know, you can go in for a Tombstone here, and if they Earthquake... The Earthquake does not end up hitting the Tombstone and the Tower at the same time. Just a slight thing that a lot of people know, but if you don't know, now you know. So, we can go in for another Goblin Drill here if we want to. I think it's going to be better for us to do that, just to keep applying pressure. And then I can go in for Tornado with a Golden Knight on offense. So, I'm going to go and do that right now. I hope that I can go and dash onto Goblins and hit the Tower. Oh my gosh! Yo! Look at the Tornado with the Executioner too! Underrated MVP! <laughs> Wow, Executioner, I love you. You're killing the goblins too, but the Golden Knight's like, Jake, where's the praise? I took out almost all the entire tower, and you're still praising the Executioner? Bruh, this is awesome. <laughs> People get so tilted playing against this deck. As you guys can see, this guy is in straight-up misery. We can get the P.E.K.K.A. to tank for the goblins again, and he hasn't had any chance to go for a Hog Rider. Well, there it is. There's, there's his first Hog Rider that actually does something, maybe. <laughs> Not really. We just tornado him down and make him frown. GG and well played. Very fun stuff. I can't tell if someone's sarcastic. Okay, yeah, it's definitely sarcastic. <laughs> when they spam three well played in a row, when they lose in a matchup that's not very good for them, you know they're not having a good time. I caught Fisher with the best possible hard counter. After tragically tilting that Hog Rider player, now we're 3,800 in the world. All right, so jump into this one. Let's freaking go. I'm going to go in for our goblins at the start and see what he's up to. If I can get some nice damage, that'd be cool. Ooh, I don't think the Mega Minion hits all the goblins in time. Oh, it did. Maybe I'm just like super slow when I drop my Mega Minions. <laughs> I think that's what it just taught me. This guy is a Mega Minion mastermind. So he's going to have Dark Prince as well, which is horrible for me nine times out of ten. But maybe we can go and dash onto the Dark Prince and then hit the tower. Oh, you didn't want that to happen. Yeah, it makes sense that you didn't want that to happen because you got such a good trade. So I'm going to split up my archers, so if the Dark Prince dashes, it's not going to be able to hit both of the archers and splash onto both of them at once. So that's pretty good for us. Dark Prince is out of cycle as well, so I'd love to, for him to go for, like, a Bar Barrel here. Oh my gosh, it's a Sparky deck. Against Sparky? Isn't it just better for me to go for a Skill Drill on the left-hand side and force out Elixir, and then focus on a really nice defense with a P.E.K.K.A.? Oh my gosh, he's going to ignore it because he doesn't have Dark Prince in cycle. Oh, never mind, he wasn't going to ignore it. It looked like he was going to, and then he decided not to. So, we're going to go for a Tombstone first and foremost, then we're going to go and drop our P.E.K.K.A. on top of the Sparky. 
Very nice. Because he doesn't end up having Barbaro and Cycle. I'm pretty sure that the goblins were not necessary, but <laughs> rather be safe than sorry against the Mega Minion Mastermind. This guy, he's uh, really hurting me with that Mega Minion. Oh my gosh, the skeletons though. We've got our own little scuffed graveyard. Yeah, love it. How is the Mega Minion still alive? This guy, he's just got the Mega Minion secrets or something. It's crazy how much value he's extracting from that. You'd think it'd be a Phoenix by now because of how many it's been on the map, you know? It's never been dying. Oh, wow, yeah, that's the issue when you have like high cost cards like Goblin Giant, Sparky, Dark Prince. You aren't always able to afford everything that you want when we're spamming at you. And then if you don't afford it, the Golden Knight dashes on your tower <laughs> and it feels bad because the Golden Knight's only at like one HP. So you can't like afford to drop a high cost card to counter it. Anyway, we are going to see what we can roll with. Obviously, if he goes in for a Hunter, a little bit annoying, but it is what it is. It's a 4 for 4 trade. It's a lot better than him dropping a Dark Prince, which I can't necessarily counter with my Goblin Drill Goblins. Like the Goblin Drill Goblins were able to nullify the Hunter into a part that I didn't really have to drop any Elixir on it. So that's nice. Go for a Golden Knight here. I'm going to go and drop the Golden Eye Dash. Ooh, ooh, wait, this guy's got the moves. I think he might have messed up the Golden Eye Dash. Okay, no, he didn't. I thought he did with the Lightning, and I thought he was going to, like, make me drop the Golden Eye Dash in the wrong timing and then, like, counter it. Oh, that would have been so tragic. Does the P.E.K.K.A. one-shot the Sparky? It does. Very nice. I think I want to go Goblin Drill here, so then we can go in for a Golden Eye as well, potentially. And then I hope that the Sparky targets the wrong thing. If it targets the goblins and the goblins lock them to the tower and then the P.E.K.K.A. hits from the front, we should win. Wow, I played that really well, I think. So, obviously the goblin drill, we don't care if it explodes because then it goes and gives him a birthday pinata of goblins in his face. That was exactly what we wanted. See, this guy is so good, though. Like, he's not giving me too many opportunities to get what I want. We are going to go in for another goblin drill on top of the tower and he's going to go for a lightning. I think that the, the goblin drill should win us the game. I'm pretty confident that the... Wow, the Shrek barely did any damage to me. Also, if you guys didn't know this, Tornado the Dark Prince as it kills the Goblin Drill, because if you Tornado the Dark Prince away, the Goblins lock directly on the tower instead of the Dark Prince hitting them. So that's the thing that you have to do against Valkyries and Dark Princes in the final stages of the game, and that's why Tornado is unbelievably overpowered with this deck. It's not just the obvious synergy with Executioner and Golden Knight, it's also really good with Goblin Drill. You love to see those dominant Ws, and now we're 3,400 in the world. All right, we got a game against Closer. He's a part of the Fierce Force. So we are a force to be reckoned with with this deck and I am ready to wreck up some towers So we're gonna go in for goblins immediately. Uh, this guy is gonna have knight. So whenever I see knight and Electro spirit, I think it might be a rocket cycle deck or maybe like a minor poison deck I don't know. I mean usually we think it's not gonna be like a graveyard deck, but Ooh, it could be expo Now I realize what it is. I was like what doesn't care about king tower activations that has knight and archers there's only one thing that comes to mind, and it's Expo. So, what can we find with our Golden Knight? If our Golden Knight's able to cross the river, we can go in for a very good Goblin Drill here, because he doesn't have Valkyrie. So he's going to have a limited amount of answers in his arsenal to deal with it. Wait. Oh. What? No way! That is such an unbelievable big joke. Dude. He dropped something at the river, and the Golden Knight still hit his tower. You have to be kidding me right now. Holy heck. Also, I think I lose this game because I'm thinking about it right now. I don't have a big spell, so I can't kill defensive expos. And this guy is smart enough to drop a defensive expo, so I am a very sad sir. I mean, I might win it, but it's going to be a very long ride. So I'm going to go in for archers here. He'll probably just fireball them. Oh, this is so sketchy and scary, guys. Like, what am I supposed to do? A little bit traumatized by our position. I could tornado to kill his archers a little bit faster and damage down the expo, but I just don't think it's worth. So we're just going to conserve our elixir. We're going to go in for goblins on the right-hand side, maybe get him to log. We'll see what happens. If we get a log out of him, it's a W for me because I can go in for a goblin drill, and he doesn't have log to finish off the goblins that are spawning from the drill. So that's always something that's nice. We can go for a tombstone here, and then we can go for the executioner directly on top of it. The executioner with the skeletons might be able to put in some work. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that trade. Oof, this is a little bit sketchy and scary. As I said before, though, it's not exactly optimal played against someone that's good that has this type of situation where they can grab defensive expos at every point in time. So I need to get a lot of damage with the goblin drill, and I need to be able to effectively defend with Pekka's, which is a little bit easier said than done. So, he's going to go and start spamming his archers, which I can't reliably kill. I'm going to go in for a P.E.K.K.A. here. He's probably going to go other side with an Expo. As soon as I drop the P.E.K.K.A., that's usually what they do. 
I can go in for a Golden Knight here, and I can dash and kill the Archer, and then hopefully dash onto the Expo as well. No! It hit the Electric Spirit instead! Oh, this is actually awful. <laughs> I am traumatized by our position. He did allow us to get a really nice Executioner lock, hitting the Expo as well. So, you know what? I'm content with our situation. It's just, it's not looking good because the matchup isn't good, is basically what I'm trying to say. I think I do lose this one. So if you do play against a top tier Expo player, they can just outcycle you, and because you don't have high enough health cards, you're eventually going to lose. So I would say if there was one main weakness from this deck, it would be Expo at the highest level where we are right now. We're playing against like top like 1,000 and 2,000 world players. This is going to be too tough. One last Golden Knight dash, please! Yo, it actually worked! Wait, 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 wait! Oh my gosh, no way! <laughs> Dude, I almost came back. So you can cheese your way back into the business, but it's not a very reliable strategy here. If your opponent knows to drop defensive expos and just fireball cycle you out after getting one good expo connection, they're always gonna win that matchup. But that's also against really good players at top 3,000 in the world. And our cheesy Golden Knight still was able to make that super close. Even though we lost that one, the two satisfying Golden Knight dashes were a major win for me. Let's dash onto the next game and bounce back. Let's secure that last W today. Come on now, we're gonna go for the drill. Kind of my favorite play to start off the game with because if our opponent doesn't have Valkyrie or Dark Prince, you load up a lot of damage. <sighs> Speaking of the devil, wait, it still didn't hit the first goblin. He had the best answer in the game and it still didn't hit the goblin from the goblin drill. You love to see it. So uh, I think it's gonna have to be Electro Giant or maybe, ooh, ooh, I didn't know if I got the uh, Golden Knight down in time. I was like, uh, my heart's racing right now and this isn't the vibe that I wanted. This is not how I wanted to go down. Do I click the Golden Knight dash? I think I do just to guarantee that I don't have to go and allocate goblins. Okay, cool. So, I'm going to go Goblins in the right-hand side, force out some extra Elixir there. He might Tornado them to activate King Tower. I think that was a bad play on my end, because it's an easy King Tower activation if he decides to do it. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Electro Giant players, what are you doing? <laughs> oh no, he's going to have Fisherman, and he's going to have Inferno Dragon. Never mind, this is not as good as I wanted it to be. But we've got Goblin Draw on defense, so we can just use that on defense and be okay, hopefully. I'm going to go for a really low Golden Knight, so then we can pull the Dark Prince and not have that like charge on my tower. And then I somehow have to get archers down here. I guess I can go for a tombstone as well and then get goblins down after. I think that's going to be our best bet to distract the Inferno Dragon. Uh, Dark Prince, don't hit the goblins. Ooh, oh my gosh. All right, we should be able to tornado that back in time. I don't know how much damage it's going to do, but it's going to do a lot. Oh my gosh. Literally one of the most uncomfortable positions I've been in a long time. I cannot believe that the guy had fishermen to pull my P.E.K.K.A with an Inferno Dragon to melt the P.E.K.K.A too. Like, dude, how do you gotta have to play like this? Why are you doing this to me right now, brother? All right, so we're gonna go for another P.E.K.K.A here. It will be able to get pulled by another Fisherman if he wants to drop it. He is gonna drop it, but it should be able to kill the P.E.K.K.A's counters in time, right? It's all right, it's all right. It's, it's what we needed it to do. We don't need anything more than that. Gonna go in for a lot of Elixir as well. He should lose all of his stuff, and we can go for Golden Knight to pull back the Inferno Dragon. So we're chilling at this point. Pretty sure the Inferno Dragon doesn't lock onto my tower. Holy heck, man. What are you doing with this deck? And why are you like this? All right, if we go Tombstone, it should be able to distract the Dark Prince for a while. And then we can go in for Goblins, and we can go in for a Goblin Drill. So we might not have a good answer to Goblins looking at his deck. I'm hoping that he doesn't. Gary the Goblin! Yo, let's get it. I love it. I love it. So we can activate King Tower with this. If we hit the right timing, it shouldn't do any damage to our tower. And here we go. Activate King Tower. You guys already know. And then I'm going to go and click the Golden Eye Dash and dash onto the tower. Oh my gosh. The comeback is mounting. And we are mounting up some damage. All right. So he's going to spam enemy. We know he's going to go in for an Earthquake. So we want to go in for a High Tombstone. And then we want to go in for a P.E.K.K.A. when we get the chance. And then I want to go in for Goblins. So then when he goes in for a Fisherman, he doesn't pull the P.E.K.K.A. So he's going to Tornado, actually. Uh, interesting. Hmm. If I go in for Archers, we can kill that. And then we can go in for a really aggressive Golden Knight, potentially. Or, yeah, I think we're going to just do that. We're going to let our P.E.K.K.A. die. I'm not going to spend any extra Elixir here. Do I do anything? Yeah, I think I just Tornado back the Dark Prince, and then the Goblins lock on a tower and I win, right? Yes! 
Cheesy tactics for the W. You love to see it. Holy heck. That got my heart racing at the start when my opponent surprised me with a fisherman to pull my P.E.K.K.A., which was my only available answer to counter that Electro Giant. But luckily, we pulled ahead at the end and drilled down the tower despite our opponent having Dark Prince. After snagging the win against the sneaky Electro Giant Sir, we're going to be finishing the day at top 3,100 in the world. Like, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an incredible rest of your day.